In this video, I'm going to look at a Python program that uses a number of uh, modules libraries to uh, plot and fit some data. This is going to be some data from chemistry that involves a peak. So I'm going to be fitting it to a Lorentzian form. The code for this can be found at the URL seen here. I'll also try to remember to put it in the comments. And I'm reading the uh, Excel file with the data straight off the internet in this program, but I'm also putting it in the zip file in case there are any security issues. And if you want to try it, you might have to uh, read it locally. Okay, so here we go. So what libraries am I using? I'm using the, the Pandas module. Um, if you don't have it installed, you may need that on the terminal, pip install pandas. Uh, I'm also using the OpenPy Excel to read the Excel file. That uh, once it's installed, then it works with pandas. So you will see down here in line 15, it's PD, the pandas uh, reading Excel. Um, so there were sort of two installs for this one line of code here. Um, I'm going to bring in the uh, operating system module. I'd like to, at the end, I'm going to save the graph and the fit, and I want it uh, saved to the same place where the, the Python is. So that's why I'm bringing that library in. I'm bringing the matplotlib uh, library in for the plotting. I'm doing uh, some work with sort of setting up a, a plot of the equation and NumPy is good for that to apply uh, equations to lists or to to create lists and so on. Um, and then finally, uh, SciPy is the actual curve fitting. And this uh, curve fitting to this Lorentzian form is going to be uh, nonlinear. So there's some uh, linear method supplied. Uh, it's a little bit harder for to do the nonlinear, and uh, it's usually the standard is a least squared. So you have some some form of your fit and your data, and you're going to calculate a a difference, a deviation. You're going to square that. You're going to sum them up. You're going to try to minimize that. So uh, uh, that makes it least squares. Okay, so line 13 is just the line to make sure that my sort of terminal operating system knows and it should be in the same location as my program. Here I am using a read underscore Excel to read the file. I'm reading it straight off of the internet. It's got a long obnoxious name. Um, but there we go. And I think it's pentaamine, and there's probably a better word than absorbance, but anyway, so some data. And that data was provided. I've been using playing with this data for a long time. Um, it was provided by a colleague of mine from the chemistry department, George Shalhoub, um, from from years and years. So it's very old data. Um I am giving names to the data. I'm also changing its uh, sort of format. So it was, uh, when I read this in, it's giving me a, a data frame uh, object. And I am then I'm moving from working with the data frame to working with lists. And so this is casting a field of the data frame to a list. I do that for the two properties, the wavelengths and the absorbances, the x's and the y's. I'm starting to make my graph. Uh, this is just a little uh, making the background and establishing sort of a grid. Let me run it, and then I will. There we are. So this is what we are making. And so here we're establishing the this, this is the light green background. Here's the grid. This is making the data points. 
So the wavelengths and the absorbance, which came from the Excel, um, S, this 35 is the size of the data point, alpha is whether they're transparent or not, and then um, the color of the dots and the edges of the dots, and these are both, there's more, um, I guess this is some kind of uh, blue-green or something. Um, it's got more, mostly blue, so okay, so some color. All right, then, um, so now I have the data plotted. I want the uh, fit, and here is my Lorentzian form. It has a variable, which will be the wavelength, and then it's the absorbance that we're going to fit. And there are three fitting parameters. Uh, H corresponds to the height of the peak. W corresponds to the width of the peak. Um, it's really the half width at half height. And then X0, I'm calling it, is the uh, position of the peak. So the, the peak will be centered around X0. It will be H high and will have a, a width related to W. And here's some, just a comment, me saying what the, all those parameters are. Because in this, when you have a nonlinear fit, this is one of the big differences between a linear fit and a nonlinear fit. With a nonlinear fit, you sort of need to give a head start. With a linear fit, it's got a method. You don't need to give it a head start. It can figure it all out. With a nonlinear fit, you sort of need to be sort of in the ballpark. So you typically I'll plot the data, and sort of try to understand what the parameters are and give myself some kind of head start. So curve fit. Uh, belongs to the psi pi. Psi pi brought in curve fit. This is the, the nonlinear curve fitting. Uh, what function are we fitting it to? Uh, what are the x's? What are the y's? What's my head start for the parameters? So I set a height of 0.35, position of uh, 450 with a width of 20. So could have got, I could have done better guesses. I could have done worse guesses. I just wanted to have some reasonable guess. If you make a terrible, terrible guess, you might, you know, run into the issue where you fail to converge. Um, then uh, this curve fit gives me sort of uh, two outputs. Um, one is the sort of fitting results, the fitting parameters, and the other is information about convergence and so on, was it a good fit? I'm just going to be interested in the, uh, the fitting parameters. And we're going to look at it and just see with our eyes if we think it's a good fit or not. So there they are, uh, the H, the X0, and the W extracted from pop T. Um, and I'm just printing them to the terminal. Then I want to draw the fit. So I'm making just a sequence of points. I'm using NumPy for that, uh, starting from the minimum wavelength to the maximum wavelength, and I'm going to do 300 points. So this, it's a peak curve, so it uh, chain. you know, I usually have a smaller number here, but there's at least one part near the, the peak, the peak of the peak, where it changes pretty rapidly. So I wanted a fair number of points in there. Um, here I am plotting the fit so that X is the X sequence. The Y is my formula with the X sequence put in uh, some color. This is a blue, some transparency, some width. So that made the blue line. So the blue line is the fit, the green, green, blue, uh, circles are the data points. And then I am, sometimes I will put, I like to put some information about the fit onto the graph. Uh, sometimes I'll put the equation, and this time I just opted for the parameters. So I said, 
here's me saying, here's what the peak height, peak position, and peak width were, and the values. And here's me putting it onto my plot at a X of 600 and a Y of 0.3. So here's 600 and a Y of 0.3. So that was the sort of, I guess, the uh, lower left. And uh, I'm titling my graph, giving it an x-axis label, a y-axis label. I'm saving it. And uh, so as a PDF, so there it is in PDF form. And show at the end is what uh, brings up this, uh, this sort of pop-up window with my graph. So that's what I wanted to show you. Um, using a number of uh, Python libraries, pandas, the operating system, matplotlib, numpy, scipy, uh, all these to do this non-linear least squares regression on some data from chemistry that involved the peak and the mathematical form we were fitting to was a uh, Lorentzian peak, or sometimes I've seen people call it, I think, Kaush Koshi. Um, all right, that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks much for your attention.